Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. In Taiwan, I went searching for something, something that I've been wanting to do for such a long time. Now this may seem pretty insignificant to you out there, but to me, this is everything. I wanted to build myself a kind of new, but a retro Pentium 3 system. And I've been going on about this for a little while now on the channel, so if you're new, yeah, this has been a little bit of a saga that's been happening, but Marco, our friend from Taiwan, weeks before he arrived, said he'd tracked down some new Socket 370 boards, and the idea of a motherboard being new in 2023 kind of got me curious. Not only that, I ended up getting a CPU cooler for it as well, because the Intel stock coolers can be quite loud for Pentium 3s, and I wanted something a bit quieter. And this was actually new old stock as well. So I'm gonna stop talking. I wanna show you guys what I got and explain why I bought this board because truthfully, I didn't actually need it. The Soccer 370 board I had is fine. Let's recap a little. I've got this A-Bit VL6. This is a Socket 370 board, lots of PCI slots for expansion. And this is some of the hardware that I was playing around with a little while ago. I think I made a video about it, I can't remember. I think that's an FX5200, one of the worst GPUs ever made. I've got a bunch of old SSDs that of like small size that I've been testing some stuff on. Well, this was ages ago, I haven't done it in a while. I've got a Sound Blaster Live, one of the most iconic sound cards of all time. Uh, although the boards that I have don't need sound cards, I want it to be a bit better. We've also got the iconic Voodoo 5 5500. This is a dual GPU graphics card from the pre times, the good times. Also, I picked this one up on eBay a little while ago. This is a Pentium 3 one gigahertz. On this A-bit board, I've already got a Pentium 3 CPU. That's a 733. The first thing I picked up in Taiwan was a new CPU cooler. Now, this is the cooler that comes with the Pentium 3 733. It's tiny, look at it. This thing is super loud and I hate loud CPU coolers. The store that I picked up the board from, which I'll come to in a moment, they had some new old stock CPU coolers for Socket 370 and also for some AMD sockets of the time as well. But it's big and beefy and should quite easily cool a Pentium 3 one gigahertz. A cooler like this on its own, even if I was to buy it on eBay, would run me more than 50 or 60 Aussie dollars, sometimes up to 100 Aussie dollars getting something like this shipped and they're all in places like Poland and Eastern Europe and places like that. So they're pretty hard to get. I've tweeted many times asking people if they've got any Socket 370 coolers laying around that I could possibly have or I could possibly buy and no one seemed to have anything. So buying one in new old stock in Taiwan seemed like the next best option. Here's the other thing that I thought you guys might find interesting. I picked up this motherboard. This is where the motherboard goes full Taiwan, right? This is so cool. And if you've ever been on AliExpress, you would have seen stuff that's kind of similar to this. Okay, it's not actually this prime board. It's just a random motherboard box. This looks like your regular run-of-the-mill MATX Socket 370 board of the time. But that's not what you're looking at at all. Everything on this board is brand new, except for the chipset. What I mean is, what they've done is something that we've seen a lot of boards on AliExpress and Taobao and those kind of marketplaces do, is they harvest chipsets and they make brand new PCBs and brand new motherboards for obsolete sockets. And that's exactly what this is. A brand new Socket 370 board in 2023. Okay, let me explain. Turns out this board is a remake of an old compact Despro board 
What they've done is they've got the schematics for the board and then they've remade it from scratch with a new PCB. That way it's compatible with BIOSes from the old compact boards. Does that make sense? I hope this makes a little bit more sense now. So the board is a new board based on an old board, but it's been built in 2023 or in the last year or so at least. Pretty crazy, right? Now, it's not the most perfect board in the world. Uh, one of the, the good things about this board here is we're not going to be suffering from any problems with capacitors being cactus. This was the era of questionable capacitor quality. One thing I noticed about this board, mind you, I have never powered this on, so we don't know if it works, is the CPU socket itself sits in a very precarious position because it's right on the top edge of the board. Now I've tested the stock Intel cooler, fits no problem. I'm not sure if the just cooler we bought is going to fit. You can see here, there's original Intel chips here. There's a North bridge and a South bridge. Those are both harvested from a board. All of that rear IO, that's all new stuff as well. This is insane to me that there's a market for this, or maybe there's not a market for it. Maybe there's industrial PCs that people need to just keep using that use this platform just to save time. But yeah, I love the fact that you can go to Taiwan and buy this stuff new. This is crazy. Probably sitting in here for 20 years at least. And we're definitely not gonna be using that thermal paste. All right, let's see if we can do this on an angle. That is easy for the camera to see. And we'll just, oh, this is insane. This has never been opened. This is a brand new cooler of the time from that generation. Brand new. <laughs> this is insanely cool. Oh, it's so sick. Here's the funniest thing about all of this. This is the original thermal paste. It's gross. That's been sitting in there for probably over 20 years. That's amazing to me that the thermal paste is still in there too. This just goes to show you that this thing is brand new. Thermal paste of the time did look a bit more like toothpaste. Uh, compounds have changed over the years, but yeah, insane. It's not that the cooler won't physically fit how you think. It's other things on the board that are going to interfere with it mounting into place. Like little things like they probably didn't think about where the socket was going and they put capacitors all the way up against the mounting hardware. This is alone probably gonna make it not fit with this cooler. Stock cooler will go on no problem because the stock cooler doesn't have any of this. I could cut some of this away. The other thing is, look at this heat sink. It protrudes past the bounds of the edge of the board. So it could be a problem with some cases actually, even cases of the time. So. That's a little bit of an oversight from whoever designed this board, but fear not, there is a solution because I want to test this board out to see if it works at all. I've got a couple things plugged in here. I've got a graphics card, this is, I think the FX5200 with a DVI to HMI adapter just so I can make it work and run it on a, on a modern panel. I also have a PS2 mouse and a PS2 keyboard. Well, it's actually a USB keyboard that supports the PS2 protocol. This is a Leopold keyboard I bought a couple of years ago and I use this for this retro kind of stuff. It's a modern mechanical keyboard that allows me to use PS2. That's getting rare as time goes on. And yeah, RAM, everything. It uses modern power supplies. Instead of 24 pin, it uses 20 pin. Let's see what happens when we power this thing up for the first time. Really got no idea what's gonna happen here. Let's turn on the power supply. Oh, okay. That's just powered up. Let's see if we get any display out of this thing. Oh, it came straight up. It says Compact Desk Pro. Oh, that's what the guy must have meant as well. Marco translated it with the system being using the front panel connector, but maybe what the guy was trying to say was 
that this is a rebuilt compact motherboard. I mean, that's kind of cool too. Okay, keyboard's working through PS2. Yeah, this is all working. Even HDMI for this video card's working fine too. So this is really good news. It's two days later and I started tinkering with the ABIT VL6 that I had and kind of got what I wanted to get up and running, running on this board. But it still bugs me that I haven't really tried to get that other MATX board working with that cooler. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim the mounting hardware to see if I can make it fit. I feel kind of bad because I'm almost destroying the mounting clips for a cooler that I probably can't get again, but I just wanna use a smaller board. But there's something else. On Amazon the other day, I found this. It's a bi-directional SATA to IDE adapter. This one is a little bit different to ones you might have seen with people covering retro hardware. This one plugs straight into the IDE header on the motherboard and a SATA cable comes straight out of the motherboard with this. So this is a bit cleaner because what that means is instead of me using a really long IDE cable to get a drive to where I want to be in a case, I can use a SATA cable. Not only are they thinner and skinnier, they're much easier to cable manage. So yeah, it's, it's funny actually, I bought this adapter. I was like, oh, 20 bucks is fine for this adapter. Turns out it was a five pack. So I've got heaps of them now. So if I ever do any other retro stuff, yeah, this is the way I'll be doing it. And these work well, I've tested it and this whole system on the VL6 is up and running. See, not too complicated. Plug straight into the motherboard, into the IDE header on the board. And we've just got a single SATA cable coming off to the SSD that I'm using here. This is a 525 gig SSD. This works fine with Windows XP. I'm using a 128 gig one for Windows 98. I haven't decided which operating system I want my Pentium 3 system to run yet, but I think Windows 98 is looking a bit more interesting because DOS gaming runs better on Windows 98 than Windows XP. The other thing is with the ABIT VL6 in Windows 98, I get quite a few issues with devices being detected and drivers being installed correctly. That is somewhat to do with the FX5200 taking up a lot of resource space, but it shouldn't really be an issue. With Windows XP, zero issues. All the PCI slots work perfectly, but Windows 98, the ones I've got plugged in now for the stuff you can see behind me, is the optimal configuration to get all of that hardware to work. I still need to pick up another ethernet card though. This one, I've lost the bracket for it, but for now, it's gonna be fine. I ended up getting the cooler to fit on the MATX board by trimming off one of the clips that was kind of touching one of the capacitors, but Everything seems to work. The system's up and running. I'm just running FDisk on here to create some partitions. I'm gonna reinstall Windows 98 here to see if this SSD is gonna be working with this machine. Otherwise, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Alrighty, we got most of the kinks sorted out with this now, and we're gonna install Windows 98. I think Windows 98 is the perfect operating system for this system, and it's just going to work. And then after this, we can finally actually build the system. The case I went with is probably no surprise to anyone. It's the Fractal Pop Air Mini. The reason for it is this, right? At the front of the case behind this panel here, we've got a five and a quarter inch drive bay hiding there, which allows us to put in an optical drive in the front, which is something we're going to be doing. I don't have the right drive that I want to put in here yet, but the rest of the system we can build up because most of the stuff I can pull off the network. So put the finger cutter 5000 in. <laughs> okay. Rear IO shield. Oh man, I really hate putting these in. It's nice that the cooler actually fits in this case too because I was a little bit skeptical, but yeah, it clears easily. I'm gonna put this drive in temporarily, but I'm gonna put in a SATA drive when I actually get my hands on one. But for now, we'll just put that in. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Actually, it looks really, really cool. I didn't think it would look this nice. Moment of truth time. Does it work?
No. What do you mean? <laughs> oh no. I hate that. Oh well that's because I didn't have the power supply turned on. Oh my god. I've done it. I've done it to myself. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Moment of truth. Yes, okay. We've got power. Oh, it works! Yes! Little MATX Pentium 3 gaming PC coming live. Oh, Windows 98, look how quick that booted. Well, that's because scan disk opened up. <laughs> oh, wow, it works. Yeah, this is awesome. I've got a Pentium 3 gaming PC in a modern case that supports five and a quarter inch drives. Look at that. I can pop out the optical drive at the front. That is so cool. Oh, come on. This is so cool. It's got no RGB, doesn't need any of it, except the power button's RGB. Okay, moment of truth. Can we get to the desktop? Yes. Now, one problem I'm having is I'm using a DVI to HDMI to display port adapter, so I can't get 1080p video working on this. I do have another VGA monitor. I ended up dual booting Windows XP and Windows 98 second edition on this machine. This is the standard Windows XP boot menu, so we've got XP Pro at the top and Windows 98 anyway. Uh, we'll just boot into Windows XP quickly. Windows XP tends to use the SSD a lot better. So Windows XP in general, believe it or not, is much faster than 98 for almost all tasks, except obviously for stuff like DOS gaming, which is essentially a no-go in Windows XP. That's why we have Windows 98. If we want to actually go to DOS and do stuff in DOS, we can. But for Windows-based titles like Quake and Unreal Tournament, Windows XP tends to give us a bit better performance. Let's load up Quake 3 and see what happens. We'll run a quick time demo in Quake 3 as well just to give you guys an idea of the performance. Okay. So our time for completion was 22.2 seconds and average frame rate was 56.7 FPS, which is not too bad. I don't think the settings are cranked up all the way on this, but I mean, it's Quake 3. Play it however you like. It doesn't really matter. The whole point is just to see how it went. So everything's on default at 1280 by 1024. That's actually not too bad at all. We've also got 3D Mark 2001 second edition. The performance here is not going to be amazing, but these might be some benchmarks you've never seen before. <laughs> I think the performance of the system is actually pretty good. Obviously, it does not compare anywhere near where we're seeing 3D performance of computers today, but for what this is built to do, this is gonna do exactly what I want it to do, and that is play some, let's call them retro games. I hate using that term because it only feels like yesterday that all of these games came out, but also to play DOS games and that kind of stuff as well. That's why I ended up dual booting this with Windows 98 and Windows XP so I can get the best of both worlds. Pentium 3 is kind of in that transition period between Windows XP and Windows 98. It's kind of the perfect platform to get the blend of some older titles 
and some a little bit newer titles. And the question that people are gonna ask in the comments is, can it run Crisis? Absolutely not, not even close. But, you know, we, we, we probably actually could try running it on here, but I just, yeah, everyone always asks that question. That, that meme's been dead for a long time. Yeah, and that's just about gonna do it for this little bit of hardware pickup that I did in Taiwan. Special thanks to Marco for helping me get this motherboard and cool it. Turned out after a little bit of modification, this worked a treat. And also shout out to Phil's Computer Lab because he's got one of the best references and resources online for all of this type of stuff. So without Phil and his website and his YouTube channel, a lot of what you see in this video is just wasn't going to be possible. Obviously, I'd done this back in the day. Those resources are great to refresh your memory. To be fair, I didn't really use any guides to get this up and running. This is all just memory kicking in, but Phil's website has a lot of drivers and stuff to help get up and running. So yeah, shout out to Phil. Awesome channel. I'll put a link to his channel in the description down below. All right, ladies and gents, I'm all retroed out. I've been working on this one for about four days, just on and off in my spare time. As I've mentioned in a previous video, I've been sick. I'm only just getting better now. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy, Nick, with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek. I love these old retro PCs. These are my favorite things to do. And especially for those out there who've never seen older PCs in this way, this goes to show you that the standards for motherboard sizes and whatnot have not changed in over 20 years, right? That's kind of cool and kind of scary at the same time. Thanks for watching.